unbeaten fighters and major performers. I can't tell you how excited I am about this. Umar Ahmed, IFL TV, MTK Global. I'm at West Brom's football ground today, Hawthorns, for Tommy Langford, Jason Welborn press conference. How are you, Tommy? I'm good, mate. Very good, thank you. Yeah, that was a, a lively <laughs> press conference, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. Where did that but, all come um, from? It's a, it's a fun, it's a funny one because like it's not, um, it's not how you want really a press conference or a boxing match to go. You want to talk about boxing, don't you? But like, you know, it's the, the way, the way, the way, the way it all started is like he said something about a year ago about why do West Brom follow me? I'm not from West Brom or whatever, and all the rest of it, and and then it stems from there. But like I just, you know. I, I just pointed out the fact that like, I'm an Albion fan. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you support a football club and you follow a football club and you're a season ticket holder and you go to every game, you still support Albion. And and the reason why people follow me is because they interact with me and they see me and they talk to me and you know they're happy to follow me. Yeah. You know, and I just think there's a bit of bitterness and jealous there, jealousy there on his behalf. You know, I've never claimed to be from the black country. I don't. I'm from Devon. And I've always said it. But I've always claimed to be an Albion fan, yeah. and my point is that he's never he's never claimed it before, up until like last year. He never claimed it, never said he was a West Brom fan. So, yeah, do you think he's been saying he's no, a baggy he, fan listen, he's, now? Listen, he might be West Brom if you said who you support. Yeah, like, yeah, West Brom. He's not an Albion fan. He don't like football. He don't like football. He don't. He don't. He don't. And then so he said what he said to get the fight, and fair enough, the fight's been done, and they filled it as the battle of the baggies, and it makes it better for everybody involved. And there's a couple of ex-footballers coming to the game, and to, sorry. To Fight. We've got football on the rain. <laughs> We're talking about it in uh, football on the rain, but um, yeah, there's a couple coming to the fight. It makes it more special for all the fans who are going because there is a hell of a lot of baggies who are going to the fight and they're going to be. Uh, and to it support. hasn't been the best of season, so there's something to look. Ah, <laughs> that's what I mean. This can be a celebration, can yeah. it? For you know, Albion fans, it can be a celebration and it can be a night that we can all enjoy and you know, I'll enjoy and uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how do you see Jason as an opponent? Obviously, been in some big names, um, Liam Smith, Frankie Gavin. He took a, he talked about that Frankie Gavin fight in a press conference. Macklin, um, but obviously he's come out short in all of them. Yeah. Um, what makes you confident that it'll be the it's, same case it's, on, on it, May the fourth? It's a it's a simple fact of boxing. I can I'm, I can box, and he can fight. Like so, I don't believe I I believe I make this fight as hard as I want to make it. Um, you know, it's been shown before in previous fights that Wellborn's been in, when he's not been getting success and he's not been on top, his head's gone and he's crumbled. And that's what happened against Gavin, that's what happened against Liam Smith, that's what happened in other fights, you know, and, and all the rest of it. And So it's just a simple case of that, stick to my boxing, stick to what I'm good at, um, and don't get drawn into anything, and I'll do, I'll do a number on him. What's your prediction then? Is it, do you reckon you'll beat him on decision then? It sounds like from I'd, what you're saying. I'll, be, I'll, no, I'll beat him. I'll beat him and I'll beat him however I want to beat him. If You know, it will. what it will go down to is like... It will it'll come out hard early. You'll have to if, if you don't. And it's just opening the way for me, really. Do you think that's his best chance? He has to come out hard early because he has to set a plan. He has to set about, try and set about me. If he doesn't do that, then he's... No, he's on the, on the hiding to nothing, he's going to be losing the way through. Um, but he'll be losing anyway, because I think once he comes out and does that and he realises he's in trouble and he's not on top and he's not doing what he needs to do and getting, getting success and I'm dominating and I'm mm. winning, I think, his, I think his head will go and I can see him quitting really. I can see him quitting or just beat him comfortable. But we'll come back to you in a minute. There's been a lot going on in the world scene. In your yeah, division. yeah, yeah. What do you make of the whole Canelo Golovkin thing? Uh, You've obviously failed the drug test. Yeah, uh, listen, uh, the drugs test thing. If you fail drugs test, you should be banned. Like, and that's my perspective on it. Always has been. Um, it's dangerous, life threatening sport as it is. Mm. Um, anyone doing that and seeking to gain an advantage like that is very, very, you know, you're putting lives in danger, aren't you? So, like, I think that needs to be, you know, it, I think it should be banned, and I think. The fight should, if the fight had happened on the back of that, it would have been a shambles like that. It would have taken it all away, just that takes away from it. So, um, I'm glad he's got caught. I'm glad he's been found. I mean, he's an advert for Clem Brutarol. If you look at what Clem Brutarol does, he's like, body wise, he's an advert for it. So, like, he's banged to rights, really, as far as I'm concerned. And 
he should be banned. So and you're any, definitely uh, not buying the meat excuse. Nah, do me a favour. Nah, mate. And you're telling me the richest man in Mexico is eating poor Mexican meat? <laughs> I don't think so. But anyway, that's that. And I'm glad that's happened in that respect. Um, you know, and it's paved the way now for the unification point, it? Billy Joe and Golovkin at some that. point. Yeah. That, that's hopefully at some point that happens. Obviously, Billy Joe's got to fight Murray first. Not in June. I was just yeah. going to say, if Golovkin, well, if he even if he fights on May the 5th, so he does, gets a win, <laughs> Billy Joe gets a win in June against Murray. I think I've read on, in the mail somewhere that Frank Warren's trying to make an offer to Golovkin for September at the Emirates. Yeah. Billy Joe and Golovkin unification. How do you rate Billy Joe's chances in that one? Um, very good, and they're increasing all the time. Um, you know, for one, he's a you know he's a British fighter. Billy Joe is, and you know I like him and everything. I I think he's got a real good chance, um, especially the sort of boxing he's displayed against Lemu. Golovkin is a completely different animal to Lemu. Let's get that straight. But you know it, it, I think when you look at Golovkin's performance against Jacobs and he struggled with the footwork and things, Billy Joe is a much more polished, better mover than Jacobs. But then Jacobs has more of a punch to keep him to keep him off than Billy Joe would have. I think it's an extremely interesting fight, very good fight. Um, and the longer it, the older Golovkin gets, the better for Billy Joe. And um, timing might be right for him. Time might be right for him. Um, obviously for for British boxing, I'd love Billy Joe to win. Um, do I see it happening? Really hard to say. Really, very, very hard to say. Um, I just, I, Do you think you know, it goes a distance? Is Golovkin? I think it goes a distance. So I think it goes a distance. Has I think lost it goes. Power. No, no, he ain't lost his power. But it's just is, Billy Joe is such a good. Oh, just you, Billy you just Joe's, Billy Joe's so elusive yeah. and so good on the, at moving that that you know I, I, I think it goes distance. It's just whether whether Billy Joe could do enough in the rounds yeah. to nick the rap to nick the rounds. You know, boxing on the back foot and manoeuvring around. It's whether he could do enough with that sort of style to to win the fight on points. Um, I think the only way it would get stopped is if Golovkin decided to just walk through Billy Joe. Mm. Uh, but I don't think he does that. I th but Golovkin himself is too good a boxer to think I'm just going to walk, give away rounds to walk someone down. I think it's a really close fight. It's, uh, and the, like I said, the older Golovkin gets, the more frustrated with things not happening, Canelo yeah. not happening, all the rest of it, the better for Billy Joe and the better the chances are. And But then, that being said, Billy Joe's got to get past Murray, which, you know, is... Or he's favourite to do so, and mm. I, I think he will. But it's always a hard fight. Martin Murray's, you know, this is 50, he, he represents every time he gets in the ring. He's a tough, solid fighter. Won't stop him. I think he presents a lot more boxing problems than David Lemieux did. Obviously, lacking the power that Lemieux's got. Mm -hmm. So I think it's that that itself is a very good fight. But um, I think Billy Joe gets past him, and I think. It sets up sets up for a great great unification fight, um, and I hope, I really hope it happens this year. Yeah, I think we all do. Um, yeah. Let's talk about someone you're a good big fan of, uh, Chris Eubank Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, well, a few month, couple of months now um, yeah. ago that he lost to George Groves. Yeah. Um, what do you what do you make of Eubank's performance in that fight? Well, Groves did what I, what I expected him to do. He outboxed him, and. Uh, and it showed who, who, what, what it is to be a real super middleweight. You know, <coughs> Groves is a big super middleweight, big man, big puncher. You know, one thing you got to take, one thing you got to say is like Eubank, fair play, he can take a dig because he got nailed, got nailed a few times by Groves and rocked and things, but he come through. And you got to say like credit to him for that. But he's not a good boxer. Um, technically, he makes makes a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. real, real raw mistakes as well. But he's so wild, he kind of gets away with it because, like, when he does all those, you know, if you get caught up fighting him too much, then you get clipped by something. So, you know, but I don't the Eubank situation. I don't know what Eubank does now. I don't know what he does. Does he move back down because he's not big enough for a super middleweight? Does he bulk up and make? Because people say he's not a super middleweight, but he's he's lean. At the, it's not like he's carrying anything. He's lean, so he's a, he's a super middleweight. He's always in the gym as well. It's so. whether like he can cut that muscle mm. to make the middle still and and still be fit and strong to do the rounds because he wasn't fit and strong to do the rounds against Billy Joe you know he started slow because he couldn't stick with it and he takes breaks fighting against middleweights so like you know in the rounds so it's all 
it's it's a funny one with him, and I, and and I don't you know I don't I don't know that they really know where they go from at the moment. I yeah. think they're a bit lost. And but one thing you can guarantee, he's going to be in some fights, and he, you know, he's got the name. He's going to be in some big fights. So there's no good saying that he's not going to get nothing, or he shouldn't get anything, or he don't. You know. Do you think Naz's comments after was a bit harsh, saying he's. You should pack it in, really. I, yeah, as much as I like the comments, do I think you're right? Uh, listen, it, there's a career to be made in boxing, isn't there? Like, it, it, no matter what your level is. Um, I think you have to. I think one thing, what he did say is he has to accept the level. He has to understand that he's not at that level yet to win at that level. Um, and he has to do some learning. He has to do some learning and real learning. But will Eubanks go back and do the learning, you know? But then... You know that, that that that's that's down to them. That's down to his team. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know where they're going to go. And I don't really, I don't really care. No, I don't really well, care. What if he did move back down to 160? Would, is that something that interests you down the line? Or was negotiating so hard with them? Listen, that? they're a pain in the ass. They're a pain in the ass. And you know there was four or five press conferences that were scheduled that they just didn't turn up to. You know oh, really? when I when I was when I was supposed to fight him. You know and signed on a dotted line the fight never happened and all the rest of it it's all it's all in the past it, they're a pain but you never say never look if the fight was there and the money's there then I'll fight him that's what it, that's what that boils down to because you've got to deal with them <laughs> you need a bit of extra to deal with that to deal with him <laughs> <laughs> okay let's move on back to you um, obviously big fight made the yep, fourth yep. Um, is the aspiration to win the British outright I, I've always said like to the Lansdale belt is is beautiful belt, you know. Mm. Owen Lansdale belt, all right. Tremendous achievement, very prestigious. It's a uh, it's something I would love to do, but I've also I also am aware that like, it can be a stumbling block in terms of progressing career-wise. You know, if there's if I can get it done and if I can get the the fights in quick, and not you know I had a long time waiting for that mandatory, a long time to get that fight sorted. And and I, I don't want to sit around on my, sit around waiting for fights. I want to be active. So if I can be active and get the fight done, get the get it done, then I'll do it. But if a bigger fight or a better fight comes along in the meantime, mm. before before that, then then I'll, then I'll do that as well. Like do you know, I'll, I'll go for that. So it's just about career moves, really. I mean, I have done mandatory against Armfield, won that well. So if I can get this defence and another one in, then I'll do it. Um, but like I said, if, if I get an offer to move on and go to bigger stuff, I'll do that as well. Well, Tommy, thanks for talking us today. No um, problem. I'm sure we'll catch up with you on fight night. Any, any last message, perhaps your fans? No, nah, just, you know, everyone get a ticket, get to the fight. It can be a great night. And maybe a message for your opponent as well, Jason? Jason knows what he's getting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure we'll see you on fight night. But for now, thanks for talking to us. Tommy. Three rounds, three minutes, three fights. Unbeaten fighters and major performers, I can't tell you how excited I am about this.